Today we're going to be starting the build for this 10x4 Dungeons & Dragons game table that you see before you right here. This has a hard maple pedestal base, which is going to be the content of the video today, and it has a plywood top, which we will cover in a future video. For that hard maple pedestal base, I had to laminate multiple sections together. This section right here is going to be the base, and then the thicker section that I'm handling right here at the table saw is going to be the vertical portions, which we are going to have to cut on the bandsaw to give it a nice design. I wanted to make sure that I pushed very symmetrically, the same every time on my table saw sled because there is a little bit of slop in there, and a little bit of slop here can go a long way in making the whole pedestal sit kind of wonky. So I made sure I push it in the same spot the same way every time and as you can see putting the square on there we are absolutely perfect. It worked out great doing that just making sure I was consistent the whole time. I did whip up a template using the bandsaw and the spindle sander to make sure I had something that I could just flip exactly like this and make sure I had the same design on both sides. I cut that out of quarter inch plywood, touched it up like I mentioned before, and transcribed that over to the hard maple vertical portion. And as you can see right there, I cut one out to make sure everything was hunky-dory. And here we are using a thinner blade. This is a three inch skip tooth blade on the bandsaw to make sure we make quick work of this hard maple. While the bandsaw did a fantastic job of cutting out all of the curves, there was a ton of hand sanding to get these pedestal, vertical pedestal portions nice and smooth. And then you don't just got to do it one time, you got to do it twice. And actually you got to do it four times because you got to do every side of those pedestals. Now we're going to move on to the base section. And these, again, squared up over in the milling section of the shop and then moved over to the miter saw. And I just want to say again, I'm using a 12 inch CMT blade on my miter saw and it is fabulous. I've used several different brands of blades over the years and this CMT definitely has given me the smoothest cut I've ever seen on any of my tools. So finish squaring them up over on the miter saw and then just like the vertical portions, we need to cut some curves on the top and on the bottom of these pedestal bases. And we, again, will be doing that over at the bandsaw. I really like using templates. As you can see right here, we have pieces that are perfectly symmetrical, exactly the same, and it looks really, really nice. Very easy to make, perfectly repeatable cuts. As you can imagine, making projects like this, I get a lot of offcuts, which we store in these Tupperware buckets in the shop, but then I typically just burn them in a fire pit, but the kids really do like to have a nice little bonfire and roast up some s'mores. East Oak sent me this smokeless fire pit. I'm going to set it up, and this is how we are going to dispose of all of that scrap wood from the shop. I was super impressed. This is the first time I fired it up the other day. I think the biggest thing that I really noticed is there is almost zero ash after burning those two buckets of scrap wood. And it has a rather beautiful flame. It's kind of like a tornado mechanism, which I guess reading the literature, it's actually a secondary flame kicking off there, which helps prevent the smoke. So pretty much a smokeless fire pit, nice and tiny, looks real sharp. And this will be how we get rid of our scrap wood. Link down in the description below if you guys are interested in getting one. But back to the build. How are we going to attach these two pieces together? I'm going to be using dowels, and I'm going to be using rather hefty dowels. I think these are half-inch dowels right here. And we're going to keep it simple. We're going to add some wood glue, and we're going to put four dowel pins in there in a symmetrical pattern. And we are going to then just transfer that from the base pedestal portion to the vertical pedestal portion, making sure we keep the pieces aligned so that the same sides always stick to the same sides. Now that's good just because if anything moves, if, if one side is thicker than another, or maybe the edge is not as close, everything will be symmetrical, but it's also very important as we're moving on to drilling a hole to accept the cross brace later that we make sure the proper sides are aligned accordingly. After a hefty amount of tight bond glue, we're ready to join the two pieces together, set it in place, and it did take quite a bit of persuasion to get them together. Dowels don't always drill perfectly straight, and this is a byproduct of that. 
Dals aren't my favorite. I do like them better than biscuits. Maybe not as much as something like a Domino, which I actually don't have, but I imagine that a Fez tool will drill a straighter hole for you and make it a little bit easier. But for what I had in the shop, Dominoes were the best method of joining these pieces together. Now I, drid, I did drill and countersink through the base into the pedestal and drove a gigantic, I think this was like an eight inch structural screw up into the base to make sure everything was pulled together and that this will never come apart. Once we had those two sections permanently attached together, I set them aside and then we need a way of attaching the tabletop to this pedestal base. And right now we just have a smooth top, but as you see right here, I cut some quarter 20 threaded dowel and I epoxied these into a hole so that we could simply put the Dungeons and Dragons game table on top of these pedestal base and screw it down with four bolts. Now, kind of fuzzy because my focus was out, but I wanted to make sure that these threaded bolts stayed perfectly straight. And also I'm twisting the bolts to make sure we have a even coating of epoxy throughout the hole. I mentioned earlier wanting to make sure that we always are working with the same side. So when I say that the cross member that it's going to attach the two pieces together, make sure we work on the same side and are keeping account of everything. What I'm doing right here is making sure that cross brace, which is just a piece of hard maple with again, threaded quarter 20 bolts epoxied into the end. I'm making sure that the alignment of those threaded dowels is going into an area that I can account for and that I can drill these giant holes so that we can put a bolt in there, which I'm drilling a hole for right now. So we can put the bolts through there and then put a nut through the bigger hole to attach the portions, the sections of the bases together to make the one big pedestal base. Now we have a lot left to finish, but we're gonna stop the video right here because the base is done. That is how you make a pedestal base. Here you can see the table which has a espresso stain on it and then is finished in my favorite Enduro polyurethane. In the next video, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that. We will make the Dungeons and Dragons game top, trim it out in hard maple, add the stain and spray the finish on there and it turned out awesome. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Please hammer that thumbs up button if you did. I'm DIY Tyler and we will see you guys in the next video.